It's August of 4, 2015. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as the nuclearproctologist.org, and you can find these videos and Fukushima presentations at Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube again. Hi, Miss Milky, Shani Ken, Rattlesnake, Rattleshark, sorry, Wiz Kitten, Missing Sky, and we just say hi very quick to everybody. As we start it's off, it's August of 4, 2000. Snuck up on Dana. Let me lower the quality on that one so it's not chewing up the bandwidth on us. That way, hopefully, I can catch some of the comments as they roll through. And we see Elmwood, Candace. Now, Tonight we got a really big show, really, really, really big show, big, big show. We're going to start this off with a bang, and I mean a bang. So I'm being stalked by a guy, and we've been trying to work out his name, but he told us what his name is, and he's got Connecting Dots 1, Connecting Dots 2, Connecting Dots 3, and Silver Goldman. Now, I'm not 100% sure that he's not using somebody else's ID, but... So, I had the Flying Tacos video here. Louis Lamoureux. What happened there? Aha. Uh -huh. Dan had voices in the background. Hope that worked out. Let's try that again. Because I had... Something playing in the background, and it shouldn't have showed up. There's no audio. Got no idea. No audio. Um, the levels that we're seeing aren't um, a cause of, no uh, of concern. And, in fact, the, the levels that we see um, are, are very, very small compared to naturally occurring radioactivity <laughs> that's always in fish that we, that we consume. Um, the so it's a thousand times more natural radiation than there is from Fukushima, so don't worry about it. Jay Cullen, that's the spokesman for Canada. He's not even a nuclear scientist. Canada got 25 reactors. But that was connecting Dot's name that you were looking at during that time, before that. Pop that up again. Louis Lamour. Now I think that might be his name. Because yeah, he's supposed to be part French or something. Uh, but it is interesting that I'm not getting no audio out of that. I got no concept of why not. Anyway, let me get that out of my ears. Yeah, I think he likes me too, Shanigan. He likes me a lot. And anybody who's not familiar with me, I'm Dana Durnford, and we're doing an expedition for life up the coastline of British Columbia. And here's a small trailer. So that operation is headed up north very shortly, within 12 hours. We're going to the most northerly point of Canada, and then we're coming back in leapfrogs of 20 nautical miles. So every low tide, it'll spend a couple hours at that low tide, then I'll move 20 nautical miles, and then spend a couple hours at the next low tide when it shows up, and then move another 20 miles, all the way down the coastline, the west coast of Canada. It's very ambitious, uh, trust me. We're talking about the open Pacific Ocean. And we're talking about this has to get done. And Chernobyl, for instance, if you look at the third sentence, over 10 days, it stopped after 10 days, right? But it was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs. 400. Just put your mind around that. 400. 400 Hiroshima bombs. And Fukushima, each reactor is three times the size. And let me show you some of these reactors while we talk about that. Fukushima, each of these, re this one here is three times the size of Chernobyl. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. This didn't stop. So just a single reactor by itself would be catastrophic. But it's not that 
It's not that simple. That's reactor three. That was supposed to be reactor two. I'm showing you. Hang on, I'll get to it. Here's reactor two. That's 100 percent. That's three times the size of Fukushima or Chernobyl. That's 100 percent meltdown. Melt through and melt out. Chernobyl 30 percent meltdown. Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. This never stopped. Here's number three. Melted reactors three. We have to stop all three of them. We can't accomplish anything else until we stop those. And they're not trying on purpose. This is a genocide. But this is a, a ecocide too. And that's what we're doing in the Fukushima Expedition for Life is we're traveling the coastline of Canada. This is our fifth, fifth trip up the coastline. And I'm sure this is taxed everybody out there. And that's the problem with this is we had to do this in increments over a whole year. It's so difficult to do what we're doing anyway. It's so difficult just to get on a single island in the Pacific Northwest. You're isolated. You're hundreds of miles away from anybody. And I'm by myself. And I'm going back. Uh, you know, tomorrow morning, um, I can try, honestly say I'm not looking forward to it. This is Unit 4 at all because it's so much stress and so much... So many things can go wrong. I have no fail safe in what I'm doing. Something goes wrong, no one will ever know. I'm by myself in the middle of nowhere for extended period. We gotta get the data. You'll find the data up at the nuclearproctologist.org. Each of those buildings detonated went kapui. Each of them many times worse than Chernobyl. But you know, Chernobyl was using graphite. Chernobyl they threw a million people at it. Chernobyl, 600 helicopter pilots, they all died of radiation. Chernobyl, you still can't eat the meat in the UK, Ireland, Scotland for large sections of it. They lifted the ban a couple of years ago after 25 years. But does that mean that there's no radiation there? Of course not. It's never going to go away in UK, Ireland, and Scotland. They don't care. The government doesn't care. And they want to put up more nuclear power. They got Sellafield air hemorrhaging into the ocean 4 million liters a day. A day. It's hell on earth in every sense of the word. That's all nuclear is. Let's get on with some more fun stuff. Who knows what I got coming up. We got uh, now Connecting Dots, which is this gibberish maker. Uh, he's a PR firm connected with UVIC. And we're just going to explore that for a few moments. Here's a clip coming up. There's actually two cameras right on site. There was no hocus pocus funny business here. Anyone with half a brain could follow up this stuff and follow the construction. These weren't homeless people put in charge of laying down the foundation and all. the stuff that he's been telling them non-stop joke anyways like I said there's a lot of images out there he just doesn't want to show his people instead they come over and give me a hard time because I'm showing colored yeah I'm like yeah because that's the TEPCO plan well, what part do you guys not understand that this is the plan they drew it out for us so they could tell you they're taking off the two top floors of reactor four sad Sad. They even showed where the crack was in the building. And these people don't want to talk about this stuff. So yeah, they had to change the building. Obviously they couldn't keep everything or all that weight on. So no audio again? How is that even possible? Let me check it out. Microphone is on, camera is on, no audio. Okay, got blurred too. And who knows, probably the way it goes. Dana went silent. We're off to a poor start here tonight. Let's keep rolling. We'll move on. I have to cover it when I come back, I guess. Let me just try one more audio of him and see... 
But this should be the UVIC. Let's try it and see if it shows up. Make sure that audio. Last night, this was just last night's show, this guy, Dana, by Dana Dernford, the Ding Dong, is actually crowdfunding to come attack me. Uh, and I'm not kidding, you get to hear some of this stuff. I've sent it out to a uh, professor at the University of Victoria telling him, you know what, you got a bunch of lawyers on your side, university money, listen to what he's saying. He wants to hunt us down, hang us from a tree, he doesn't mind doing it all day long. Oh, disgusting here, I can't play. <laughs> I'm afraid to talk. So you're good now? Okay, thanks, guy. For the ding dong. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> he's got a right, you, Vic, Jay Collett. That's what he's talking about. The guy I played for you earlier, right? Um, so you got to take it into consideration what he's talking about. Let's go just run into that and we'll move on because we got a lot to cover here tonight. And. Unit 4, we show all the pictures of Unit 4, we don't just show selective pictures, we show the whole spectrum of the pictures. So number 4 collapses, Japan will be evacuated. Right, that's the building, he says was okay. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy about the, some of these pictures that I'm going to show you, hang on. Uh, I know Anna Beck was saying, Dana, I've seen something about Doiny. No, this was, a, what, what we're talking about is this is what all the media showed and has repeated and regurgitated. But I mean, if you really want to take it to the next extreme of what the media done with that, let's, let's play, um, I never find that now. Then I got too much. Hang on, we'll find it though. Uh, not as easy as I thought it was gonna be, is it Dana? There's Jay, hang on a second, we'll find it. That's going to drive me crazy if I don't find that. Hang on. Hang on, hang on. I got an idea. I got it there, but... Uh, there it is. So I just can't remember what the, the screen capture looked like. Here's Miles O'Brien. He's PBS. Now I want you to remember that was three letters. PBS. For what's coming up after. He's the science director for BBS, but he's with CBS right here. And listen to him, what he's saying. And they are all showing the same picture of the interior employing and saying, like Seth Dorn, right? Like Seth, like Seth from CBS, he said he was inside Unit 4. The part of the work taking place here in Reactor 4. Taking place here in Reactor 4. Here's BBC. What are they showing you? Look at it. This is what happened to it. This is it behind me, Unit 4. Look at it. You don't realize uh, how simple it is to pull the wool over on the majority of people's eyes. Informal shows you the interior. Look at the two pictures that I put there. So, I'm having a smoke. I haven't got 7,000 chemicals. Take a deep breath and relax. I want you to listen to... Uh, MIT on March the 15th, 2011, and here we go. I'd like to welcome our own students from nuclear science and engineering and other members of the community here at MIT and also visitors, I think, from elsewhere. And shortly th after 3.30, there was a hydrogen explosion in building up in the building of reactor one so when of that explosion uh, not long after the evacuation zone was extended to 20 kilometers radius on monday at 11 a.m so this is now uh in, on the third day um there was a, a hydrogen explosion of building of reactor three in the meantime reactor two fuel rods what what is reported to have been fully uncovered and they 
quite soon began to inject seawater, borated seawater. Water. Um, at 6.14 a.m. on Tuesday, that's today, of course, but, but since they're um, uh, 13 hours ahead of us, that, that was quite a while ago now, um, there was a third explosion. This was in Reactor 2. This was inside, as far as we can tell, inside or near uh, the containment. And um, another worry that arose was on that same day was that the Reactor 4 building, Reactor 4 is adjacent to Reactor 3, uh, was observed to be aflame. A, a and um, so this was... Uh, uh, do you think that building was aflamed? Aflame? Do you know what I mean? And so what I'm showing you is, is PBS. Now, a lot of you know that the reason we're live streaming is because PBS just got their ass handed to them by a lawyer and they popped my video right back up. Copyright takedown notice your video has been taken down from YouTube regarding uranium twisting the dragon's tail by veritasium. This is a name that dipshit made up. Dragons t twisting the dragon's tail. Okay, that was on the 29th. The 29th. 9. 29th. Okay, all right. Premiered uranium twisting the dragon tail premiered the 29th. The same day as that was premiered and they knocked down my rebuttal, the only rebuttal on the net. Six days later, I got a phone call from my lawyers back up and we're going to proceed now because you're not allowed to do that. That's illegal to do that. Try, just trying to knock down my video and we got Connecting Dots uh, admitting that he was trying to do that. And so we'll go through his records and see if he, he actually done it. We'll have him charged with that. He's done. He, <laughs> he's done. So is, so is PBS, by the way. And so what they done was they knocked down my video the same day as they were featuring uranium twisting the dragon's tail, premiering it. Pretty slick. But they also knocked down 30 of my videos the week before. 30. I got 100 thumbs down on that video. And all I do is break down hit the, the trailer to it. And one of the videos they knocked down was that uh, Thunderfoot, super duper scientist. They knocked down uh, Kim Dusler's videos, the Jay Cullen videos, and I guess they didn't want to knock down that one. It would have been too obvious, right? But they are an apologist, though, too, see? They're no different than Veritasium, Jay Cullen, and, and Connecting Dots, all of these people. Like, you heard Connecting Dots, he contacted the university because Data wants to hang up. Yeah, I want to hang up. You better believe it, man. I like nothing better watch you swing it. Swing it! And... So this is the official picture of the interior of the Unit 4. And that's the official picture of the exterior of Unit 4. You make up your own mind. Are you smart enough to make up your own mind? Do you need someone to tell you th that that building there and the roof and the walls and the lights? Look at the walls. Look, nothing. Zero. Zero. <laughs> Zero damage, right? And look at this. Stripped right to nothing. Look at that down there. Everything blowing out to the side of it. <laughs> so that was that was the fable they tricked you with, right? But I get it, right? It was a very slick PR move. They brought out all the sharp people, the smooth talkers. And they said, oh, no, if they don't get it out, you know, they're going to have to go bye-bye Japan and they're going to have to evacuate North America. It's already gone. You should have evacuated North America. We should have been gone. That's why we're heading out on the ocean because all the species are gone on the coastline. There's one of those videos on one of those nights where nothing's probably making any sense unless you're paying attention the whole way through and know everything about that. But just let me show you one more picture of that before I shut up. Not that I'm capable, but hang on. So here's what remains, yeah? And But they claim vehemently, especially Connecting Dots, who has four sites, Connecting Dots 1, Connecting Dots 2, Connecting Dots 3, and Silver Goldman, where he puts videos up to assault me and try to ridicule me and marginalize me. And then when I finally answer him, three days later, he contacts you, Vic, and says, you got to get your lawyers on if you talk back to me. I didn't know he was going to talk back to me. I thought he was just going to be able to just bully him and everybody would come to me. I didn't know Dana was going to talk back to me. I don't like it. I, you better get your fucking lawyers down there, Jay. You never said Dana was going to get back in my face, Jay. Jay, come on, Jay. I sucked your dick, Jay. I guarantee you that's what he said. You can take that to the bank. 
not sure what bank, but you can take it to the bank. That's the expedition for life. The Zodiac is not on the roof. In fact, I didn't have the Zodiac at that time, did I? Well, she looks a lot like that today. <laughs> because it's ready to go. I got the truck all hooked up. Everything is put on board. I'm worn out. I haven't fucking stopped in over a year. Well, two years, I guess, altogether. But over a year on the ocean. Even when I'm ashore, I'm uploading thousands of pictures. Then I'm working on the boat to get it ready to get out there again. Because we got to. We got to. I mean, there should be a dozen people here to like me. There's not. And it's the only thing that works. It's the only thing that's raising any kind of resistance. It's the only thing that's waking people up. It's the only thing that's making people aware as far as I'm concerned. I don't see anything else out there that has the impact of what we're capable of. We just need a little boost. That's all we need. We need someone to get us out there and we'll take off. The planet is ready for us. We're ready for them. We got the narrative. We got the ability now to educate this planet. And we can hang those fuckers later. Right now we got to deal with Fukushima. We got to stop those melted reactors. Can't save the Pacific Ocean. But we got to document it. It's the moral and ethical thing to do. We got to do that. And we raised uh, 1450 bucks. And I'm happy about that. I mean, that's not enough, okay? Nowhere near it. But I'm going to go anyway. And keep begging the whole time, I guess. I don't know what else to do. If we wait too long, I won't be able to go and I'll be stuck after all fucking winter. Because that's what, that's what I'll do. We got to go. We got to move. And now is the time to do it. We just went through 160 days of coming ashore and another trip up the coast that was hideously fucking expensive to pull off. And so doing it the way I'm going to do it is the cheapest economic is economical way I guess you can do something and but it's the most brutal way you can do something too it's gonna to be hellish I gotta fucking live on a little tiny boat for the next 40 days or so whatever I don't care I'm proud to get the opportunity to go do that I got no issues look at the coastline I don't even expect to see that when I get up to the west coast we've covered over 10,000 miles of the coastline I wish it was enough, it's not. That's the problem. So, I'm gonna keep going. Let me keep going. Hang on, that's not what we want. So tomorrow morning, not early. I don't have it in me to go early. Oh, what the frick is this? Oh yeah, this is the water coming in hitting the Fukushima power plant. Let's watch that for a few seconds. Only 30 seconds long. Uh, the first is Matthew Wald from the New York Times. Well, I mean, this is a short video that was taken by a plant employee on his cell phone. And we've survived the earthquake. And it was the, the wave coming in. Tokyo Electric Power got out there. You see that spurt? That's the, the wave hitting the front of the building and spurting up into the air. And they looked at where the water were and this was not designed for that no plant was designed for that maybe it should have been designed for that but it wasn't right and it wasn't designed for that you know what it was designed for result if a problem later occurs they can say well the people on site the workers made their own arbitrary decision to do this it's not our fault Another example, immediately after the first hydrogen explosion, TEPCO gave out an order uh, to, or uh, a request uh, to all of these um, uh, dispatching, labor dispatching companies, and they said, send us people who don't mind dying. At that time, uh, it was really very much a panic situation. Send us people who don't mind dying. Well, see, the tsunami came in and smashed the shit out of it. The earthquake picked it all up and broke their backs. The fuel pools were drained before the tsunami got there. And so part of the cover-up is to say that the tsunami done the damage and not, uh, you know, people, so people don't think that an earthquake is capable of doing it. It's just like they told you it's like a banana or a potato chip or water and sunshine or getting on an airplane. When you encounter man-made radiation releases or accidents, right, um, it's got nothing to do with that. But in doing it for seven years, they can't stop themselves anymore. That's their money bag. The ones who get out there and sprout that, are the most evilest imaginable. And that's what Jay Conn does. That's what Ken Buesler does.
They spin it another way. They say, oh, yeah, the cigarettes are way more dangerous than anything coming into Fukushima from the polonium. The reactors had around 20,000 kilograms of plutonium, not polonium, plutonium. And so a couple of grams of plutonium is enough to give every creature on the planet cancer. That's enough atoms if you were able to distribute it. But when you're distributing it through the jet streams, and it's constantly coming into the jet streams, constantly going into the oceans, constantly, and the original releases were so massive, and so and the particles are so volatile, and there's so many of them. A couple of grams produces more atoms than every grain of sand on every beach on the planet. It's like an invisible snowstorm, a constant invisible snowstorm on the planet is what we're into right now. We can't see it or smell it or taste it or touch it or friggin' hear it or feel it or pick it up or throw rocks at it. Can't do anything. You don't know it's there. But if you go to the coastline, you see the eradication of about the 5,600 highly visible species because the ocean comes across in 45 days at five miles an hour, five miles an hour. Let's play another little clip here coming up. Ken Busler talking about in the first month, how far the radiation was recorded to travel by two independent Japanese studies. And these little arrows are the location and strength of the current called the Kurashio. We like to call it the Gulf Stream of the Pacific because we're more familiar often with the Gulf Stream. Very fast moving <coughs> current, moves like a little snake offshore. And when you release a contaminant that's soluble, it's going to move with those currents as fast as 1,500 kilometers here in one month. This is a prediction from a Japanese. 1,500 miles in a month, but then it stops, does it, right? Because he's telling you, oh, no, it hasn't reached the coastline. Oh, we find, he told you four years later, oh, we finally found a couple of Beckwells. Why wouldn't you want to hang that guy? Why shouldn't that guy be on trial? I can't come up with any reason whatsoever why that guy is even on the planet, outside of the murder you, to deceive you, to trick you, to stop you from trying to get a handle on it, to stop you, anybody out there from understanding what's really truly happening. He goes around, he... You know, you got all kinds of nuclear scientists on the planet, but we're stuck with Ken Buesler, marine chemist, and Jay Cullen, marine chemist. So a marine chemist is most likely one of the most evilest things on the planet. We should eradicate them, every fucking one of them right now, just in case the rest of them are evil too. They're the two spokespersons for the entire planet, for the Anglo-Saxon anyway. UK pumps them out there, um, New Zealand pumps them out there, Australia pumps them out there, Canada's pumping them out there, and America's pumping them out there. Jay Cullen and Ken Beersler. Two nobodies. Two nobodies that has no right to even have a mouth, let alone a tongue or a nose. They should s cut it off and sew it shut and let them fucking suffer, okay? Let me play another kip clip before I say something real fucking nasty. Um, this one is Harvard. This was uh, March the 16th, 2011. Here's what Harvard had to say. They didn't talk about bananas. They didn't talk about potato chips during that particular uh, press release. No, what they said was... Uh, firstly, uh, units one through three are suffering core damage accidents and perhaps spent fuel pool accidents as well. The spent fuel pool is located at the top of the reactor building uh, which in each case is, is damaged, units one and three, in, in fact, destroyed at that location. So unit one and three damaged, and then he says, in fact, destroyed. Destroyed! Destroyed at that location. Anna Beck said, why am I so quiet? So. And perhaps, thank you. He's pretty loud. So Whiz Kitten is going to turn everybody into a goth. Hi Ricky, Annabeck, Chuck, Whiz Kitten, atypical homeo sapien. What about the Donny? Yeah, the Donny had three reactors that didn't go into cold shutdown. We assume they melted now because of the four years that have gone past. We got con I'm not. I haven't got seven thousand chemicals in my cigarette. Take a chill. And so, Anna Beck, I put a clip in there for you of uh, Miles O'Brien inside the Unit 4 at Fukushima. <laughs> here, here, inside the Unit 4 at Fukushima. 
I never played a clip where he says, yeah. Annabeck thinks most of the pictures we see are of Doiny. I disagree with her, but I haven't checked into it to see if they changed something or something that she's talking about, so I don't know. The pictures I'm using are the official pictures, what they claim, and we know they're not Unifor, right, Annabeck? We know they're not Unifor, so they're probably Doiny. But I'm just saying this is the official pictures that are distributed worldwide and, and over and over and different pictures, all of the official different pictures of the interior and I'm, no one's arguing that that's not Fukushima outside of the connecting dots it was a fucking reject of the planet what's his name again um there's that fucking video play that one more time whenever you get sick of that video now we don't know if that's really him or not but that looks like him now what he done was he thought he took down one of taco's videos he went to it he went to it and what he discovered was the video was missing and here was his name Louis Louis Lamour just like the writer and so you have to show your ID to take down someone's video claim copyright if Taco had a challenge him Taco would have got his video back up my lawyer will challenge him though no problem at all she's, she's paying attention to him now because we're gonna eat him and everything connected to him oh <laughs> they're done you have no idea you have no idea we raised enough money to go after him, right? What was it? Uh, almost 1300 bucks. Not to get going on him. I gotta wait till I come back, but. No blur for for a few seconds. No, just a blur, Ellie said. Yeah, that's just the way it works out for me, isn't it? Well, let me try that one more time. Let me re, re import it in here. Hang on. Where's he tilt? Oh, good God. I wouldn't have got done with that now. I put shit everywhere, so nobody knows what's going to show up to next. Yeah, that's my fault, I guess. Okay, let's keep going. We'll do it next time. The other video worked. So, Vertasium, PBS, took down my video the same day they were premiering the one I was criticizing. So I was the only person after criticizing it. And rather than have somebody out there with another narrative, they knocked it down illegally and then they had to put it up six days later. I'm gonna assume it was the lawyer because she called him, told him they'd better not keep me shut down. And the reason we done that was because this was how I normally raised the money to go on the expedition, the live stream. And when they took that down, I was just about to start the fundraising so I can leave the day. And I wasn't able to do that. And I came out and I snapped in one of my videos. There like a six minute video. <laughs> I wasn't very happy. I was busy the next day right away. But what you got to remember was. That was legal. They had no right to take it down. And that's why I was so upset. But you know never underestimate the power of stupid people in a large group. Ken Buesler, Jay Collin, uh, Kevin Kemp. There's a number of these people out there, and what they do is they get into the media and they lie, 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 lie. Look at Iran. Iran got 45 black dots. Each one is a military base. There's actually 49 now. They're surrounded. Iran was 165 degrees. Probably still is. 165 in one city, 100,000 people. But 115, 120 right across the country. They're being cooked. So there's all kinds of electronic warfare, there's all kinds of, of uh, you know, like everything we see is 30 year obsolete technology. Who knows what they're using? We know that harp is not um, a fable or, or a conspiracy theory. We've seen the director of the original harp being interviewed and being candid about it. Yeah, we got one. China got one, Russia got one. Weather wars, that's probably what's happening to Iran, most likely, right? Iran's not a threat. How do you, how are you going to get out of Iran? How are you going to get out of Iran with 49 bases around it? Military bases carried out, uh, you know, air, land, sea embargoes, electronic warfare, stealing money from the banks, from the machines. No, it's just a big grab. And then you enslave an entire country for an ideology because of the 
uh, Israel. I'll just dwell on that for one second. Israel, you know, they say we need to write, we want to be recognized, but they don't recognize the five million refugees they created living in absolute poverty for 61 years. Oh no, that's okay, forget that. No, no, there's, there's refugees over here, Dana, and there's refugees over there before, so what? No, you created that and stole their land. No one done that before in our history, in our recent history. And and then you carry out a genocide against the community that's left, and the whole country is the fourth biggest weapons producer on the planet, on top of that. So the fourth biggest producer of misery on the planet, right? That's what Israel is. That's what it does. You know, think about one reactor three times the size of Chernobyl, 100% meltdown, Chernobyl, 30% meltdown, Chernobyl, even 400 Hiroshima bombs after 10 days, that never stopped. That, that reactor there at Fukushima didn't stop. That reactor at Fukushima didn't stop. This reactor at Fukushima didn't stop. The fuel pulled, like all the reactors were damaged. Five and six were damaged, the cores were damaged, all the cores were damaged. Look at the building. The whole country was hit by a tsunami, hundreds of miles washed away. But no, no, Dana, they're okay. No, the reactors are built pretty tough, Dana. Shut your fucking mouth. You stupidest person on the planet. We're so sick of your lies. No more. You killed the Pacific Ocean. You killed it. It's dead. Pacific Ocean is fucking dead. You bring up some Pacific Ocean stuff. Well, we don't. Dana. So this is all British Columbia. And like so you open some of these folders and you got more folders. And I mean there's a thousand eighteen hundred pictures in a fucking folder. The underwater shots, these are underwater screen captures. We put some of that video up, right? Let's go find some cleaner stuff here. Hang on. So all you're seeing is this, the video's up here. You can go look at it on my site at Beautiful Girl Boy Danny. You're watching this later. But there's nothing else on the rocks. There's nothing there for the urchins to eat. There's no clams, no mussels, no scallops. The video is much better than some of these pictures. But for, but uh, the whole coastline is eradicated of all the species except for a handful out of, third, out of 5,600 species, highly visible species. And sea urchins have failed on the coastline in the last number of months according to the commercial divers. And there used to be one of them. And those little red splots you see, that's sea cucumbers. But there's literally nothing else there. And you can see the kelp on the shoreline. There was 21 algaes on the shoreline. That was Langira Island, the most northwesterly point of Canada. I'm going to the most northerly point of Canada. I'm going right to the Alaska border. There's over 400 miles from where I'm to right now in a little red dinky by myself. And so, once again, you know, I haven't got enough to make it back, <laughs> and I haven't got enough if I have a problem. So I've got to keep raising money is all I'm saying. I haven't got enough if I have a problem to fix it or, or deal with it, even a simple problem. And so I've got to try to raise more money uh, tonight just to make me feel that it's safe enough for me to go. And. You know, I need about five times of what I've raised there already to finish the trip very properly. And so on every chance I'll get, I'll find an internet connection and keep begging for enough money to finish this trip out. There's nothing I can do about it, because that's what I'm going to have to do. That's what I'm going to be doing. And uh, see that starfish right there? See, that's such a rare thing down there. When there should be 78 species of starfish, and each species should come in multiple colors, and there should be 76 species or so of sea anemones, and each of those species will come in multiple colors. And the sea anemones can live in colonies of 500 per square meters, and they do, and they have for millenniums on the coastline. And the entire coastline would be populated, every rock would be populated, if it never had nothing else on it, it would be covered in sea anemones. <laughs> right, and then the sponges, and then 600 algae. And then all the invertebrates, the 5,600 invertebrates without the backbones. The periwinkles, the snails, the mollusks, the clams, the oysters. And then every other rock on the shoreline should have been covered in mussels. Loaded, completely loaded in mussels, but it wasn't. You'll take Lu Louise Passage. Uh, Louis Passage, rather. I don't know what I got done there. 
So that's, the, that's in parts because I uploaded it in parts. But uh, look at the starfish by itself. He was just a small starfish. There wasn't many of them. <laughs> and you can see why there wasn't many of them. Oh, that's not what I want to do. Pull the picture down. So when I see him, when I took a lot of pictures of him. But you can see all the way. Look, there's a couple down there. These purple ones, that's the only ones that dominated anything. But they didn't really dominate anything. I could have put every sea urchin and every sea cucumber and every sea anemone that I saw in the last year. And one of those trips was 160 days on the coast. All of that in the back of a pickup truck and still not fill it up. So there's nothing there. I should fill up a pickup truck in that little spot there of just uh, starfish. Anywhere I go. 70 odd species. But he's there by himself. I know you're getting sick of looking at the one starfish. Let's move down for a second. But, and so a lot of these pictures were blurred because I'm in a boat and it's very fast tides there. But there was that slime, that green type of algae. That was the only algae that was deer at a 600. And there's nothing else there. There was, there was no uh, manilas or little necks. There was no mussels. I think I did see a small patch of mussels. And the barnacles uh, were disgusting. Yeah, some of these pictures, boy. Well, that's the point of it. The whole coastline is eradicated. There's nothing anywhere. There is nothing anywhere. And it's been like that since... Uh, let's move back a bit. It's been like that. Let me see. Day 11, Telegraph Cove. Day... I want to go back, back. Let's go look at the... Uh, Simon's on the... Yes, yeah, Simon's on the beach. Victoria Harbor, Berkeley Sound. Let's go... I don't know. I think there's Banfield here. Let's see what plays in the background. So there was a couple of algaes there. There's a couple of algaes there. Hi, broken ass on alert. Hey, buddy. Those pictures that we were just looking at earlier from Langara, that's where uh, Corey's still. Broken ass on alert. There's a good hound defiler, man. He's good people. They're buzzing around on his murder cycle. And so that's a leather starfish. That was last year, last summer. And a sea anemone. And a couple of snails. And that's my kid took those pictures. And what his job was to document anything you can find on the shoreline. And what I do is I'm, I hang back and I, I take pictures. Um, I hang back and take pictures. So it's the same day right here, I think. Okay. Dana don't know. What the fuck do I know anyway? Someone please fix this fucking road. Oh yeah, that's Berkeley Sound. So I interviewed the, the guy at Berkeley Sound, the director, uh, Brad Ahol, appropriately named. So the highway, but Brad said there was no sea enemies growing on rocks. And if you go and Google sea enemies or diving in Berkeley Sound, you'll see nothing but sea enemies on rocks, pre-Fukushima. So the pictures here is, I went up the road, and I went two different days or three different days, I can't remember anymore, up the highway, and I was looking for insects. I was on my sco little scooter, little tricycle. And you can see Zoe there by my feet. And so I go up this hill, Parksville, Nanaimo, is, uh, the closest one is 42 miles. It's all forest. And so all the, like there's nothing on the highway, no insects. And I went a long way, way the fuck up this road, looking for insects that got hit by automobiles. And looking at automobiles, like the big motorhomes, just for something to do. And I couldn't find any insects on the side of the road. And so I went back the next day, looking, and I found one. And I found one dragonfly and one uh, bee in two days, is what I found on the side of the road. 
on the side of a road where it's 48 miles to the next town, it's all forest. And it's rainfall. We're talking real rainforest. There's trees just up here, probably 10 kilometers from where I am right there, that you can put 30 people inside of it. So it's a real forest. It's rainforest. It's true forest. It's a protected area. And so the Fukushima Expedition for Life has really encompassed many aspects of it. And then when you think about the birds, there's Terry, Terry up in the, poor McNeil. Terry's on the beach with the small camera. And so there's some algae there, but there was nothing else there. That's the kelp weed and bull kelp you see right there. Kelp weed and bull kelp and a couple of little algae, not very strong or nothing. That brown algae. And there's a mussel right there. You can barely see him, I'm sure. Uh, that was off. I think that was Banfield, too, yeah. So just the kelp weed was the most dominant one, and that's the most dominant in the Pacific. But there should be 600 algae there, so all the other lakes can live among it. All the snails and mollas and the 480 species of worms. And then you got all the flannas and floras and the insects on the coastline itself, right? We just done eight days up the coastline, and we were camping on the shoreline, right at the low t high tide line. We never got bothered by insects for eight days, in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by forest, and islands and archipelagos. Still never got bothered. So that's another algae right there. That's three algae. That's a that's a uh, microscopic shot of it, of the algae, that green algae. And once again, that's an atypical picture of the entire coastline. I said, we can see some mussels right there. That's the giant California blue sea mu uh, blue mussels. And you won't see many of them, same as the barnacles. Now this year, from what I'm seeing so far this year, and the Queen Charlotte was the prime example of that, Night of Terror. Um, Skin cuddle did have some starfish, just that one species though. That was tough times. That's the boat on the anchor. I left the sleeping bag on the radar to try to dry it out. It was the first close to dry day we had in a long time. And that's skin cuddle, that's on the east side of the Queen Charlotte's. It's way up in the middle of nowhere. I'm going all the way up the coastline and come down the west coast. The west coast. So all these pictures are at the lowest of the low tide usually. And you should see some starfish. There's one there. There should be pictures there, but y'all you're gonna see that orange is the same family as that purple, it's the same species. And so out of the seventy eight species of sea uh, sea stars, uh, that purple and the orange and the yellow are the same species. So 78 species, now you multiply it by many colors, right? That's why that visibility, that highly visible colors are missing. That's what I mean, because there's nothing there for them to live in and live and live. Like normally it would be 600 algaes, and when the tide is low, they can hide half in, half out of that, and be shaded by 600 potential algaes. I mean, that, but there's 4 million species in the ocean altogether, not and they're not all algaes, but there's four million species that we don't even know about in the ocean. The ones I talk about are the ones that are considered indigenous to the coastline of British Columbia, Canada, where there's 26,000 island archipelagos. So not all of my pictures came out blurry. No. Lots of them come out good. What I done was, there's a starfish, a purple one. Uh, and you can find all these pictures at the nuclearproctologist.org. We're on skin cuddle, right there. And there's fucking tens of thousands of pictures up there, excuse the language. Let's move out of that, let's move back. Let's have a 951. Let's say hi to everybody. Miss Milky, Amters, uh, no bugs in New Zealand. Can't pronounce your name, sorry. It zipped out of my sight before I had a chance to. Missing Sky, broken ass, island art, Corey. Where is it? They're burning rubber on his murder sickle. Actually, it doesn't sound like that at all. It hits around, what is it, 18,000 RPMs or something, Corey? It's like badass, man. It's like, 
It's like lightning on steroids. Guy Hills, Anthony. Yeah, I'm just winding down. I'm running out of steam. I worked the entire last two days trying to pack everything onto the boat. It's still not all on the boat. I still got to get back out there when this is over. That's why I've done it an hour early so I can get that extra hour of daylight out there because it's cooler, right? The sun's gone down. You can actually accomplish quite a lot in the next hour once I start here. And I'm not going to get up early tomorrow morning and just like I've always done and take off. I'm going to get up 6 o'clock normal time or whatever and just take my time, have breakfast, have a cup of tea, get a shower and double check everything, make sure everything's safe, and lug it all down, stick it in the water, start moseying on up the coast. I'm not going to burn up the coast full tilt in order to save, so I can save fuel. And the idea is to go all the way to the north once again and every 20 miles on the way back. And so I don't know how long it'll take me. The weather should hold out. If the weather holds out, it could take me 30, 40 days. If the weather doesn't hold out, who knows, I'll give up at some point anyway. And the point being is that this is for the documentary and we've got to have a contest at some point, I guess, to come up with a name for that. I don't got no idea what the name of that one is going to be. But, you know, that documentary is extremely important that it's done right and, you know, I need interviews in the community. I need interviews from people along the way on top of that. There's just so much work i got to get done and i got no way to do it without help. I got no way to do it without asking for help, and that's the hardest thing for me always. Anyway, I'm sure that'd be for anybody, not just me. But it's it's extremely difficult to ask when people have already given so much and so many, and that's the problem with this. Is we haven't hit a critical mass, and so we don't have any way of alleviating the strain and the stress you know, from everybody that is supporting this. And the stress and the strain I go through is, you know, I can survive, it's okay, I don't care about that. I've already proven to myself I can put up with just hell in order to get this done. And I did 160 days, most of that living on that little boat. And, and everybody thinks that's comfortable or anything that, that that was easy or anybody thinks that that was simple you got, you're got. you so sadly mistaken, you have no concept. It's like camping in one sense, but you know, when I lost my wheelchair overboard, that just destroyed me. But in, in the other sense, it got me up on my feet and I had to do things whether I wanted to or not, because there was no other way to do it. And so that was the, the saving grace in one sense for me, was losing the wheelchair overboard. I was forced to do things I normally wouldn't do. And if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have had to the ability to can carry on and do what I don't and get to this point and finish out this and get that documentary out there and keep the battle and bring the battle to these monsters, these cowards, these creatures, this scum. And there's no reason why connecting dots, the little video that I tried to play earlier with his name on it wouldn't show up. I got no concept why that didn't work. I'll have to check the video after. I have to rewind render that and do it again next time. But we're heading out in a few hours, 10 hours or so, 12 hours. It's a long way to go. It's going to be hellish because I've done it already so many times and I know what I'm up against. And I'm just worn out. You know, I come in the last trip, I didn't stop putting pictures up, then I didn't stop working on the boat. And now I'm packing the boat, now I'm ready to run again. I haven't had a break. I don't get a break. I never get a break. I don't get any kind of break whatsoever. Like a, a, a break where I stop doing everything for a week is inconceivable. We don't have the time. That's the problem. See, Fukushima, they wouldn't be able to lie and saying it's like a banana and a potato chip and walking in the sunshine and getting on an airplane if there was no issue. They're doing that because it's a real issue. They're out there lying and manipulating. They're giving Jay Cullen, he should give every nickel back and then he should go to jail forever and he should be smeared forever. He should be known to be the scum the scum of earth, and, and Ken Beersler. And anybody else that apologizes doesn't tell the truth about Fukushima. Anybody that says it's like a banana is is a worse, is scum. You can't get any lower than that. 
Anybody who says like walking in sunshine is my mortal enemy. Anybody who says it's like eating potato chips is the, this entire planet's mortal enemy. Anybody who apologizes for the nuclear industry and lies, manipulates, and deceives, misrepresents, and misconstrues on purpose with the education, and you know, there's so many of these guilty people out there, I'm not going to pound them tonight, but they're the ones we see up in the media all the time. And they'll tell you the true, three quarters truth, and then they tell you some good lies, and you can't have a conversation with anybody. You can't have a conversation with anybody right now because everybody. Vertassium PBS just put out a documentary equating everything man made with bananas. So Vertassium is this entire planet's mortal enemy in every sense of the word. PBS is this entire planet's mortal enemy in every sense of that words. They are worse than any terrorist organization. They are by definition a terrorist organization. They wear suits and they get a lot of money and so for some reason I'm supposed to respect that. No. You'll need that suit to soak up all the blood that ever gets my hand on you. I got no time for you people anymore. You people are the dirt that I, I intend to walk on. So we say goodnight to everybody. Once again, you can donate at the nuclearproctologist.org. It's a secure credit card company. It's a really big company. And you can go to PayPal. It's really easy to set it up. You can donate to Dana Durnford, D-A-N-A, D-U-R-N-F-O-R-D, at hotmail.com. So you put in your email address who you're trying to donate. And that's how you find me. That's my email, and that's how you will know you donated directly to me. No little letters, no big letters routine with that. It's just, it's all little letters, rather. And there's no spaces or anything like that. Because there is like seven accounts out there stealing money from me with Dana Durnford. And I've closed down them many times with PayPal and they keep popping back up. And people donate to them. Some of them have made a lot of money. And no doubt that's connecting dots. Because <coughs> that's, that's what the scumbags are like. That's, that's, that's how they get their thrills. And then they, they cheat you with a silver or gold and they, they grow their money. Right? And then they buy little child sex slaves and they lock them up in little dungeons and then they sodomize them and then they choke them and snuff them and make a film and make a lot of money off of that. That's what these people do. Jay Collins doing it right now. Ken Buesler will be doing it every chance he gets. That's what these people are. They're no different than that. That's what I'm saying to you. And I, and I truly believe they're up to that. I have no illusions that they're highly capable of that. There, there's no other way around it because the evidence is in their words, and their words are full of unfounded and the, the, the 70 year lies. 70 years of the same lie. You know, an apologist is easy. They'll tell you the same lie for seven, that they've been told for 70 years, like a banana, banana like a potato chip, like water in the sunshine, like getting on an airplane. Stetson, thanks, buddy. Random. No girl magic. Woo, 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 woo. No returning from the red pill. Elmwood. Miss Milky, Elaine, Guy Hills, Chuck, Annabeck, Candace, Missing Sky, Miss Milky again, aka Silver Gold Man. That's right, Miss Milky. Oh, you're welcome, Ellie. It's not a, it's not a sacrifice t to me, because I wouldn't have it any other way. But it is a sacrifice, and I'll agree with you wholeheartedly. Again, we need to talk. Elaine says, okay, well, call me after, honey. Louis Lamour, that's right, Miss Milky, you got it. That's, the, that's how you spell it, yeah. Miss Milky spelled it right. Uh, Louis, uh, connecting dots, L-O-U-I-S-L-A-M-O-U-R-E-U-X. And good night, everybody. Where's Ken? Yeah, Adam. Adam, back good night, all. Anthony. Just make sure I say goodnight to everybody. This is the last live stream. It'll be a while before I make it back. We will post little short videos. Most likely begging for money. And that's okay too, I suppose. Whatever. Hugs, folks. We'll talk to you then.